Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. This is your host, Ken Lane of Waters Garden Center. Our family's just been gardening throughout the northern uh, sections of Arizona for generations. And we're just here to share some of the things we've learned. And we're coming into the very peak of the planting season. This is when you'll find at all elevations, even in the deserts, Tucson, Phoenix, Everyone's at their peak right now. Of course, the deserts of Phoenix and Tucson, they're about a month to six weeks ahead of us, but it's been so mild, they're still just jammed full of plants, customers. Of course, northern Arizona, that's all the way from the White Mountains to Flagstaff to Payson, Kingman, of course, Prescott. We're all in this. When we ent- May is the time to find the most choices of plants. Uh, this this just yesterday, I was unloading like 700 roses, all of them in heavy bud or in full bloom. And we're gearing up for the Mother's Day celebration. So uh, here in the, the Central Highlands, that'd be uh, uh, really Payson, D- D- Prescott Valley, Prescott, this, this, this central, probably 3,500, 4,000 foot level up to about 6,000 foot level. Uh, our peak season's Mother's Day weekend. That's when we do most of our, especially installing the summer gardens. This is when the tomatoes go in, the the zinnias and the portulaca. That's when you start putting manzanita and cacti and all these summer-loving plants. Uh, we just got a load of desert willows. This is a wild uh, tree that just grows native throughout this this Central Highlands area. Uh, they came in full leafed, not budded yet. So they're not. They're, they'll be in bloom here in another by the end of May. But we're just stocked full. Perennials had an entire semi. I have nothing but perennials. Perennials. Remember, perennials are those plants that come back every year. So just think of perennial and permanent. They both start with P. That's an easy way to remember. And then annuals just live for the season just just for this year and then they're done they're they're gone they won't live they won't come back the next year so perennials are stocked full and most of them are in full bloom we start gearing up and this is this is pretty much the whole north country of arizona uh we're gearing up i think we unloaded 200 hanging baskets so we're just they're they're gifts for moms and you know gift cards and they'll stick them they just we sell literally hundreds of them in the next couple weeks so we're all gearing up. If if there was a time that you were thinking about like heading to your garden center and thinking of a certain kind of plant, say you're remembering a, a peony from your grandmother's time or a lilac from your from when you grew up or whatever, the, your garden center is going to have it in stock now. Uh, most things. So your your likelihood is very great that that you'll have full stock now. Now, with that being said. Remember that cold about a month ago? It's been actually chilly for the last, well, since last fall. It's just we have got dumped on in March. It was very cold. We had that sleeting system that came through early May about three weeks ago. It slowed down some of the crop rotations. Yeah, I know we're growing in greenhouses, but we can control the temperature in a greenhouse. You cannot control the light And so that cloud cover has affected the crop rotation, the the growth rate of some of the plants. So we're seeing a few things delayed by just days. So, you know, your pepper, the pepper crops, the edible peppers. We have a lot of peppers in stock, but not all of the varieties are in stock right now. They will be. They're just they're just delayed. We're going to keep them in that greenhouse until they get full, till they get large, till they become plump and full and inspirational. They'll start having fruit on them. So you're seeing a little bit of this, this delay, but that's every year it's that way. Every year there's some crop that's delayed or, or ahead, or and that's farming for you. That's just the way it is. And so we're basically glorified farmers that we grow in greenhouses that are hundreds of feet long, and then we harvest the crop of you know, petunias. So we've got this new called caramel yellow wave petunia unbelievable color. I just can't believe Very rich, almost 3D mustard 
and caramel and yellow color on this very dark green foliage. Brand new for this year. It came on. It looks looks fabulous. I mean, this thing's probably I don't know, close to 18 inches round in a gallon pot. It's worth every penny. In fact, I'm, I was going to use in my own gardens a lavender color throughout the theme. That's going to be the theme. After seeing this, this caramel yellow, I might change. It's so pretty. I can't believe it. It's just so pretty. So that you're seeing new inspirational things coming in. You know, petunias that your grandparents used to grow, you know, they would grow up and then they would kind of flop over. Well, we don't sell those anymore or, or very limited. We're bringing in more and more ground covery or wave or, or flowing type of, of petunias. So get up maybe a, a, a six, eight, 12 inches tall, but then they flow over. So you put them in a hanging basket or the front edge of a, of a raised bed and they just send these tendrils off and overflow. It's like a, it's like a waterfall of flowers. And so these are the new, more desirable flowers. They just happen to also at the same time come out with new colors. One thing that you should put on your radar, and I, and I mentioned this probably three weeks ago, and I mentioned that the Verde Valley, uh, that hole from Sedona, Camp Verde, Cottonwood, uh, th they were just being overrun by spider mites and thrip. Well, uh, now it's been three weeks and now we are being overrun. So these things start at the lowlands and they just as as the weather warms up, the bugs start to hatch and they fly up and they get caught up by wind and they get carried over and they just spread. It's like a it's like a, a, a cloud overflowing the gardens. So be aware of that in your own yards. Here's what you will look for as you look in your yard. So so my iris, they're in full bloom. Now peonies, they're in full bloom. And I'm going wow, these are stunning. Why are they fading so fast? And so I got to looking at this. I'm going, whoa, this is ridiculous. I tapped a flower over top of a white sheet of paper and the whole, the whole piece of paper had a, it's like jump, jumping specks around there. That's thrip or no seams. They got into the flower, started eating the heart of the flower and the flower would just fade. Another indication, we're seeing this heavily on Japanese maples, all of the fruiting pears and ornamental pears, actually all the fruit trees, you're seeing curled leaves. And so people are going, oh, it's it's the dry wind is causing my leaves to curl. It hasn't been dry and it hasn't been hot. It can't be that. It has to be something else. And so when you really look at it, it's the thrip have become so bad. They're now scraping the outside tissue off of that foliage, and now it's starting to curl. It's a bug, not heat or dry or wind or anything else. It's a bug. Take a look. The only way I can tell is take your cell phone out into the yard and tap a piece of foliage over top of your cell phone. That's a nice reflective surface. And if you see the, the, the dust jumping around on your screen, that's thrip. They're eating your trees alive, and they're causing this this leaf curl. Uh, it looks sometimes uh, the pears, the the black, the the leaves look burned. They've actually sucked so much juice out of this plant that they've taken they burned the leaves. Uh, your roses, you'll look at this this rosebud, and it looks like someone took a bic lighter on the end of it. That's only one thing, only one thing, and it's always thrip. So that's, if you see that, super easy to solve. You just have to put it on your radar and stop blaming the wind, start blaming the insects and kill them. They deserve to die. They're eating your gardens. And so I went out to my own gardens and I sprayed multi-purpose insect spray. It's the strongest thing we can get. This is a, um, we make it ourselves and it's a man-made replica of a, an organic, for if you crush up mums, and you get this natural spray that's bug killer called permethrin. No, pyrethrum, sorry. Permethrin is the exact copy of that, only made in the laboratory. So it's as safe as you can get. Still be man-made, but it really does a number on aphids, uh, spider mites, on um, thrip, of course, grasshoppers. It stays around a little bit longer, whereas the other one, the crushed up mums, the organic, it vaporizes so quickly in our sun, it just doesn't last very long. If you hit the insect, it takes them out. 
but it doesn't stay around long enough. It doesn't permeate down into the curled leaves as easily. The multi, multi-purpose insect spray is much more effective on things like thrip. Got a lot in store for you. Be right back after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Gee, my flowers just bloom too much. Said no one ever. Hi, this is Ken at Waters. We had a crazy winter and everyone's ready for flowers in the garden. Waters Flower Power is made specifically for Arizona that gives flowers that extra boost to burst into bloom. It's an energy kick in the plants. Get ready for roses that rule, peppers that pop, and tomatoes that triumph. More power to the flowers with Flower Power at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. So what are your neighbors talking about? What are you seeing? So uh, welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. So we've got, uh, we've been busy just getting the store ready for Mm -hmm. the peak of the planting season. And then in between every truck we unload, every plant we place, every thing we display and show off, it's like help a bug customer, help a bug customer, help a bug (laughs) customer. And so I'm guessing we're going to have lots of Bug question. Totally a guess. I don't know. But uh, what do we got? Well, sure. We got all actually all kinds of questions. But we're actually going to start with a, um, a Russian sage question. Okay. So Jim planted one in his yard a couple of years ago. Now he has them everywhere <laughs> in his yard. And his question is, what's the best way to get rid of those? So Russian sage. So we should explain to listeners what 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 that is. And so it's a it's a shrub about hip high, puts on these spiky blue uh, branches that come up, and it blooms all summer long. So it's a very popular, drought hardy, uh, low care kind of plant, except for when it comes to the suckers and the seed. And so it tends to put on runners. So the roots will actually run just underneath the ground, and kind of pop up in places. They just pull right up. You can actually grab one that's coming up in the wrong place and just pull it up, and you'll watch the root come up right to the mother plant. Mm -hmm. Well, then you can just rip it off or take a shovel to the head or pruners or just don't let it creep. Keep it back to the mother plant. Don't let it. Don't let her spread out across the yard. Then you've got some seed. The seed can come up in places. So it's a very happy plant here in the mountains of Arizona. And so if a happy if a plant's happy, it's going to try to reproduce and you know take over the yard if you if you let her. Don't let it do that. So there you can spot treat it. Uh, we've got some sprays here uh, that can wipe it out. That's uh, like burnout will mm-hmm. kill it. That's an organic spray or you can take a shovel or brand, or or any kind of hoe and just pop it right out. Get it early. And it doesn't put down a very deep root structure. It puts on a very wide root structure. So this plant will have roots that come up that's three times its width all over the garden ground, just underneath the surface. So they're pretty easy to dig up and maintain. You just got to keep on it. And that's what I'd recommend. And then also, if you really want to bring the the flowers out, if you were to mix up uh, a watering can. So for us, uh, we've got all the streets lined with Uh, Russian sage, a dwarf variety. It's a newer variety that doesn't get as aggressive. So we've got those here. Uh, They're out in the front street. I I went through and I want them to be in bloom. I want them. I need them to be in bloom by Mother's Day. So I'm kind of forcing it. We'll see what happens. But I mixed up some flower power, 54, in a watering can. This is liquid uh, plant food. And I went out and I gave each one about a gallon. Just went, okay, here, take this all up. I want you to grow and be in bloom soon so it's 54 percent phosphorus and if, if there's a way to get it to bloom before mother's day 
Flower power is the way to do it. It's not going to encourage a lot of suckers. It'll just encourage more flowers to come up. Mm-hmm. So if he sprays the burnout on a one that's suckering, will it go back to the main plant? Yeah, burnout will not because it's organic. What what burnout is, we're, we're, we've gotten away from glyphosates. There are no glyphosates or Roundup products. Are, are They're causing cancer. So our customers have a lot of pets and dogs and cats, and we don't want to sell something where their dog's going to go cross, lick their paws, and it causes issue, much less your spouse going out and spraying stuff. So we've just stopped selling that. But it's a burnout is a commercial grade, I mean, super industrial strength vinegar with a heavy-duty organic oil that gets it to permeate down into the structure of the plant and then kills it. It won't affect your soil, doesn't get on the soil, only within the plant, and it doesn't travel very far up down, you know, it won't go three feet back to the mother plant and affect it. It's been my experience, that's been the case. So mm-hmm. you should be good to go, no worries at all, but they're so easy to pull up. Just pull up that one, if it's that close to the mother plant, pull it up and just rip it off. Okay. All righty. Next question is from David in Prescott. A uh, few months ago, he planted a 20-gallon beautiful maple. Of course, when he planted it, it didn't have leaves, but now it does. And yeah. his question is, how often and how much should he be watering it? So it's a 20-gallon. That's good. He knows what size. So whatever your size plant is, that's about how much water they need per week. So a 5-gallon plant will need about 5 gallons of water a week. You can divvy it up twice. Give it 2.5 here and 2.5 there. You can quickly do the math real quick on your drip irrigation. How long do I need? How many emitters do I need to get that much water at a time? A 10-gallon plant needs about 10 gallons. A 15-gallon plant, 15 gallons. Well, this is a 20-gallon plant. So probably he's going to put it on his drip system and give it about 10 gallons a shot. But water it twice a week. Deep soak it. That a twenty gallon bucket. That's that's about two feet deep. It's it's a big, large root ball. He he didn't go small. Mm-mm. He went all the way in. He's got he's got instantaneous tree, and so with that you need to water it a little more each time so that water gets to the entire root zone. So I'd say twice a week, about ten gallons at a time. And now you can back off, either get your irrigation well, uh, the berms around that, or put up your drip emitters until you can get that much water onto it. And it will be one happy, fast-growing maple tree. He's going to have a shade tree this year after he gets done. Mm -hmm. Okay, good answer. Next question is from Anne. She says, the leaves on my Fotinia are black and curled and oh, look no. terrible. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, that's that's it, like the theme this week, all this week. That's thrip damage, T-H-R-I-P, thrip. Uh, also, they can be called no seams. If you get near that bush, some bugs will start to attack you, and they'll start to bite you, and they'll, they leave little welts on your arms and your legs. You'll feel them bite you, called no seams. They're a natural thing. They come every spring in the mountains. All the elevations get thrip and aphids. They come at the same time. Thrip do not like summer. They're here while the weather is cool, and then they will be gone. Mm-hmm. And so we need to uh, we need to go after them. What they're doing is they're sucking the juice out of that leaf, and it leaves it black. You can see that on roses, on, on aspens, on apples, pears. There's several different things they really like, but they love red tip photinia. So what to do? Uh, one thing is you need to kill the bug or it will keep affecting all the new growth. If we can just thin the herd of, of, of the tide of, of, of insects, all the new growth will come out clean. No black. It'll just be straight, no curling, no, no nothing. So come in, get a bottle of multi-purpose insect spray. We'll set you up, get a good sprayer, and hose that tree down till it is dripping wet. I mean, you're not going to spray a big Fotinia with a pump-up sprayer. You need quantity, not quality. you got to hit every nook and cranny and try to really get after it, especially on the new growth. Uh, that leaf starts to curl, and it starts to, it's hard to actually kill them because they're inside this protected little tent effect in, in, in the leaves. With that, what I encourage with your waxy-leafed plants like Red Tip Photinia, before you spray the multi-purpose on, here's the insider tip. Before you spray, spray spreader sticker through that uh, hose in sprayer first. Hose the whole tree down with spreader sticker. What that will do, it's a, it's a wetting agent. It will, it will permeate down into every nook and cranny. Then right afterwards, while the plant is, is still wet, I mean, just change it out right now. 
and right afterwards spray it with multi-purpose insect spray. What you'll find is your knockdown is far better. Uh, that's critical with things like thrip on waxy leaf. It's 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 even more critical with spider mite on junipers, uh, roses, that kind of stuff. So again, they're uh, thrip and some of your white flies. They're they're on the bottom of the leaf. Mm-hmm. It's hard to spray where that that killer will actually stick up underneath that leaf. And so you got to put spreader sticker on first, then right afterwards spray it with the killer, the whatever you whatever you're spraying on that. And that goes for any any kind of bug spray. That is a good good way to start that. It'll up your game instantly. So you said, let me clarify. You said put the spreader sticker on first yep. and then the bug spray. Yep. Don't mix them together in the you same. You can mix them together, but if you're going with a red tip photinia, those are huge. This is a 10-foot beast by 10 foot wide. It's not practical. You it's easier to to spray the spreader sticker first and then follow up right afterwards instead of trying to do the math and figure out well which how much of this do I need that said to, it's just just too complicated just spray the spreader sticker first and then follow it up with a multi-purpose and it will work just as well take the full strength stuff back when this left over put it back in the bottle and keep it for the next round of bugs we see well that is it for Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners but we got a lot in store be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, aka the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Roses are red and yellow and pink. Getting a vacuum for Mother's Day can really stink. Give mom a gift that delights year after year. A beautiful blooming rose from Waters Garden Center. Waters is stocked with 700 specialty roses, hand-picked and expertly grown in honor of Mother's Day. The garden center's bursting with color and fragrance, including old favorites and never-seen varieties mom's gonna love. Everything's coming up roses at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandmother would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Purple Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. They don't just bloom once in spring, they bloom again in summer. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, and just $29.99. Come check out all the heavenly new sights and scents that are making this spring the most beautiful ever. Lilacs like Grandma used to grow and better. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. I've done a, a lot of gardening this week. Lots of new plants have gone in the ground or in our containers. And so we're starting. I'm trying to get ready. We've got a big family gathering in our backyard, the Lane Casa, come Mother's Day weekend. And so I want to have things looking really good. And you got to remember who I married into. My wife is a Waters. Her father is Harold Waters. He's the founder of Waters Garden Center, and he has been doing f- f- gardening for decades. I mean, a lifetime. This man loves design and new plants and new colors. And that's the first he'll go. You look at his cell phone, he'll have way more pictures of gardens than of kids or grandkids. Or you can just tell all gardeners are kind of the same way. Just look at their cell phone. You go, you can tell what kind of gardener they are. Are they serious or are they just haphazard or do they just appreciate? You know, just his is definitely a gardener. Well, I feel the pressure. I'm going to invite him over. We're going to do a backyard barbecue, and, and uh, I want the gardens to look great. Some new things, some things he's never seen before, some things that I've never seen before, so I can enjoy seeing how they perform and what, what happens. And so I'm feeling the pressure. So lots of things are getting ready. So the next week, this coming week, I will put probably most of the rest of the vegetable garden in. I'll finish off all the flowers, and I'll try a few key things. I'm going to try a new palm tree in the yard, just seeing if I can't winter this over. There's a few rumored to be around at this elevation. So the house is at uh, 5,600 feet. I've got a couple areas that are zone 8, and there are some zone 8 
uh, palm trees, not, not the big Queen Anne's that you see down in Phoenix or Palm Springs, but there's some that are a little more robust and hardier. Well, I think if I put those in a pot and then in the winter, put it up against the house, I think I can get this thing to come back. So I'll plant a few things just for fun because I can, because I'm a gardener. I want to see if it, if I can make it go. In my own vegetable gardens, I encourage you to do the same. You should always leave 10%, 15%, somewhere. Leave a space in your gardens for something just new. You've never done it before. You just to see how it grows. I think it just by catching, putting new things in, first of all, it's, it's exciting. Sometimes it's miserably, it's a failure. You go, oh, okay, I tried it. But I think those kinds of things keep your brain young, keeps your, your creativity going, helps you think outside the box. So many times you just plant the same exact row in the same exact place. We never really change things up. And I mean, it, it's boring. And then you just, it's repetition. I think your brain, your activity, your creativity, you need to change things up. And so I always try to add a couple new things. Not the whole garden. That's ridiculous. I've got my core, my favorite. But then I'll just accessorize just to see how they do. And it makes gardening fun. Yeah, I have some great failures. And that's okay. That's called gardening. But I have some tremendous successes that are just... Those are the ones you remember and make your heart go pitter-patter. just goes, wow, that was cool. Did you know I grew this once? It could be a pomegranate or a fig or, for my case, a palm tree or a new wave petunia or a new portulaca or a new perennial you've never grown before. You're trying to attract more birds and let's, let's see if we can get more in if we do this. That's what makes gardening so social and so fun. So I'll make sure I have to, I, when I plant my gardens as well, I think in terms of grandkids, because my grandkids are going to come visit. They live in Texas. They're going to come visit two or three times this year, probably during the growing season. I want to always make sure I've got something for my little girls to pick, because we'll go pick flowers, because it's just fun. Uh, Pop Pop and, and, and my girls, we just go pick flowers. The boys, though, they love to pick fruits. So I don't care if it's a grape I don't care if it's a, a blackberry or a tomato or a watermelon or I try to have something so every month of the year we can go out and go, hey, let's go garden, boys. Let's go, uh, let's go pick some stuff, girls. Let's, let's go get, let's go in the gardens and it helps us to connect. My oldest grandson, they call him Garden Guy Junior because you know, I'm Garden Guy. He's Garden Guy Junior. We just love tagging around in the gardens, planting some things or picking things or just hanging out, watching butterflies. It's just fun. And so we, we uh, last, what was that, November, we had pumpkin smashing. I grow giant pumpkins. And so I said, boys, you want to go throw pumpkins off the back deck? And it's a one and a half story deck. Went, yeah, Pops, let's go do this. And so we just took all the remaining pumpkins. It was just past Halloween. And we threw them off the deck and hit the, hit the patio down below. And they thought that was awe-inspiring. Let me tell you, that's a memory hook that will bring the generations together. It's just fun. I think that's part of gardening is to just think outside the box and have fun. I would encourage you, think generation, generationally or think creatively. And you'll have more fun with this thing called, called gardening. You can also plant manzanitas and butterfly bush. and just, Everything's in bloom. The whole nursery is like gorgeous right now. The butterflies and the hummingbirds are almost a nuisance in the morning. They're so thick here at the garden center. But you'll, we'll carry in new perennials coming. New salvias came in. This red flowered thing. Hummingbirds are following the shopping cart, the, the cart that we take, the, take them to the front greenhouse with because they're so interested. Have fun with that. Attract them, bring them in. Be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Gee, my flowers just bloom too much. Said no one ever. Hi, this is Kenneth Waters. We had a crazy winter and everyone's ready for flowers in the garden. Waters Flower Power is made specifically for Arizona that gives flowers that extra boost to burst into bloom. It's an energy kick in the plants. Get ready for roses that rule, peppers that pop, and tomatoes that triumph. More power to the flowers with Flower Power at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. In a new place, it's difficult to know who to trust, how to get help at the house, 
and which nursery will simply do what they say they'll do. At Waters Garden Center, we're here to help, in the landscape at least. Our team of plant ambassadors know your neighborhood, the plants that add color, increase privacy, and add fragrance and beauty. And we can show you exactly how to plant locally, or we have teams to do all the work for you. We are Ken and Lisa Lane, and we guarantee our plants will live up to every promise here at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we have Lisa Waters Lane back in the studio. She comes and uh, just shares her garden insight with all that will listen in and tune in. So, don't go in. This might even be worth pulling over to the side of the road and just so you can take notes and really get detail on this. But yeah, just welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. So your gardens are looking spectacular. Your peonies are. are in full bloom. I know. It's gorgeous. Uh, it is gorgeous. The big uh, hanging baskets out front in those raised beds, mm-hmm. they're starting to really grow. I mean, they're filling out. Uh, it's starting to soften up the, a dull, boring landscape and with colorful beautiful ground covers right uh, tomatoes have doubled in size they love this rain we had earlier this week uh-huh. i mean yeah, you could almost watch them grow it's amazing <laughs> uh, what happened this week so we're in the growing season so oh, definitely yeah de- definitely time to have you with your garden advice what you got for us well i thought i would talk about the blooming shrubs of summer okay and of course, we we always talk about roses because we have the most gorgeous, beautiful roses, and they got a huge truck in last week. So, but I thought I'd hit on some of the ones that are a little different that not everybody thinks about, but definitely deserve a place in the garden. Russian sage. No. No, that's too too common. <laughs> We're going different than that. Good. All right. Yeah, there's always there's Russian sage, potentia, the salvias, but these are a little different. Okay. So one that we got in that, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure we've had this one before, but clethora. You're asking me to correct you if you're wrong. <laughs> I would never, as a man, I would never do that. I know what would uh... happen. <laughs> 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 no clutter, very good. It's a beautiful, like bottle brush kind of mm-hmm. flower to it. Yeah, right. very pretty. We got a couple different varieties in. We got the hummingbird summer sweet, which is kind of a white ish looking one. And we got ruby spice, which is kind of a pink, more pinkish looking oh. one. They, they, as what, about three to four feet yeah, tall and wide, I'd say. Yeah. One thing I didn't know, maybe you know, do they need more sun or more shade? They're, they're generally a sunnier kind of plant. Yeah. I would say. You'll get a long bloom cycle, put them on the east or west side exposure, mm-hmm. probably not best in the north, you know, we're all full shade. Okay. It'll put on more flowers, mm-hmm. give us more sun. Hummingbirds love that plant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks really pretty, and it's a little something different. I don't think it's a very common plant for here. Yeah. So, you for- know, I took a, a picture of the, the uh, swallowtail butterflies, mm-hmm. beautiful, big, you know, a, a, a butterfly that's as big as your hand. It's yellow, and it was... Uh, taking the pollen from the yellow pansies. It was just Uh such a magnificent, and I Instagrammed a video of that. Mm -hmm. Just went, it is so pretty. I can't believe it. It's gotten so many, a little heart thing you hit with Instagram. It's gotten dozens and dozens of that. It's just magical to see Mm -hmm. hummingbirds and butterflies attracted into the yard. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, We also got some Caryopteris in, which is a good hummingbird attractor plant and a good bee attractor, pollinator plant. Um, And they have... Really, it's a very drought-hardy plant, but really pretty blue flowers on it in the summertime. Yeah. Great in those xeriscaped yards. Just has a really nice, attractive look for that. Yeah, it's, it's a pollinator, too. Mm-hmm. Bees, it's a, it's a, bees love it. Mm-hmm. Bees like blue flowers. That's a really pretty blue. Right. So, yeah, what about hip high or so? Three, four feet high? I'm kind of ball four, shape. Four by four, four yeah. by five. You can always trim them, keep them what you want them to be. But definitely work great out in the yard. And then, of course, hibiscus or Rose of Sharon. Um, we got three different ones in that I thought were really, really pretty. We have the French Cabaret, which is a kind of, it's a double blush, kind of a pink blush color. Gotcha. And that one's going to get, if you let it go, five, six feet, yeah. maybe a little bigger. Um, the Tahiti, which is a deep uh, pink slash purple one. And it 
it really shows up in the yard. And that's another one that gets five to eight feet, somewhere in there. And then we got one that's a little smaller. It's only going to get three to four feet, which you don't see a lot in the hibiscus. They usually get the great big size. Um, it's a summer ruffle. So it's a double flower, and it's got kind of a pinkish to lavender look on it. Pretty. I like yeah. the double flowers because mm-hmm. it's got more of a pom-pom right. look to it. You know, everyone thinks of hibiscus with just the five petals, and yeah. and they're pretty centers, but, but the doubles are just so striking. Mm-hmm. And you can count on them. We've literally had hibiscus in some of our gardens. They were so loaded up with flowers, they fell over. <laughs> Because they couldn't, the, the structure of the plant couldn't hold all the flowers. We had to mm-hmm. stake it back up. It really does well here. And there's, these are hardy varieties of mm-hmm. hibiscus or right. rows of Sharon's. There's also a whole series of tropical varieties that are more for Hawaii than it is for here. Those won't winter over. They'll grow here, but they won't winter over here. These will actually winter right through, come back next spring, and do it again for you for decades to come. You bet. We also got a whole series of crepe myrtles in. The thing I love about crepe myrtles is they they like that really hot, so they wait till late summer, mid to late summer before they start blooming, and they bloom for an incredibly long time. Yeah. But the colors on crepe myrtles are so dynamic, um, and we got a whole series called the Magic Series. So there's Coral Magic, Midnight Magic, Plum Magic, Ruffled Red Magic, Sunset, and Twilight Magic. Wow. So yeah. These are fluorescent colors. Is oh, that yeah. the purple series? That they get it's, purple they're, foliage? They're, or, or? Uh, Some do. A couple okay. of them do. Gotcha. Yeah, they have that darker foliage as opposed to the green, yeah. bright green. They all crepe myrtles have fluorescent flowers, and they do really well here. Mm-hmm. They don't grow quite as large as you would see, that, let's say, in the south or right. something. They don't get as big. Yeah. And sometimes our winters will reset them. They act like a perennial. They'll, they'll go back to the ground, have to grow back fresh from the ground. I think that's why they don't get as large. Mm-hmm. You don't see trees no. this elevation. I rarely see that. It's mainly a big shrub. Mm-hmm. It just glows in the dark glows they're they're magical (laughs) out in the yard that's the magic series right there you go you're so creative and then we also got in some gardenias we got three different varieties of gardenias in um, this year so we got sweet tea in which is a re-blooming and it's probably the cold hardiest of all the gardenias. It will actually go to a zone six. Oh, that's and minus 10, 15 mm-hmm. degrees. That's crazy cold. Wow. Oh, yeah. That might even grow in Flagstaff. It would be close. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, they're more of a zone five, but it'd be right. worth trying. Yeah, definitely. And they get about three, three feet, three by yeah. three, four by four, somewhere right in there. Um, and it's reblooming, which you don't always see that in a gardenia, which is kind of cool. We also have double mint in, it's another rebloomer. But this one's smaller, and it has um, uh, gets about two to three feet tall and wide. So it'd be a great one for a container. Oh yeah! If you want to do some Perfect. canyon gardening with that. What's the name of that again? Spearmint, peppermint, double double mint, D- double mint. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I missed the first part. Double mint. <laughs> You're thinking of that old commercial. Yeah, I am. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, age is a bear. I don't know. It, it just is. gets to Boy, it's rough. <laughs> uh, and then we have Sweet Star. Now, Sweet Star has um, more of the simple flower to it it's not that big double flower like the ones you see in california or in the south it has a a simple flower to it but the fragrance is amazing on it it truly has a nice nice fragrance how tall does it say that one gets it's about there again about three to four feet tall and wide i think that's the one we have out in the front yard in that container that Mm -hmm. big oxblood red container that's the variety right and it's simple but it fills the entire front patio up with that gardenia oh, fragrance yeah. and it took the cold we had this winter oh, yeah. it took it like a champ yeah it and came just, through it's bigger than ever i mean it's about to mm-hmm. bloom and I, I'm, it the fragrance is going to be overwhelming this year it'll be great i know but cold hardy know. yeah there yeah. are some varieties that are cold hardy definitely when do we get the hydrangeas in have we heard what, what I, your crop don't, looks like or? they're not we don't bring them in until they're blooming or ready to bloom and they're not there yet Really? I um, want them for next weekend's Mother's Day. I know. Peak. A lot so. of those crops are just delayed because of the weather. All and right. So they're just taking Keep a pushing. week or two longer to you come You do in. want to get the repeat blooming. You, you don't want, you get the wrong hydrangea and it mm-hmm. will, 
it'll bloom this year and then it won't bloom again ever again. So it gets, they go back to the ground. And so it takes a certain variety. You got to be careful and do your homework with that if you're looking at those. But there are some that do really well, but hopefully next weekend. Let's course, hope. I'll make a few phone calls. Okay. Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back after this. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Roses are red and yellow and pink. Getting a vacuum for Mother's Day can really stink. Give mom a gift that delights year after year. A beautiful blooming rose from Waters Garden Center. Waters is stocked with 700 specialty roses, hand-picked and expertly grown in honor of Mother's Day. The garden center's bursting with color and fragrance, including old favorites and never-seen varieties mom's gonna love. Everything is coming up roses at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Wondering why my garden looks amazing? Well, that's personal. The personal garden shopper service at Waters Garden Center, that is. Before talking with my personal shopper, I had no idea which plants would be best for me. But now my garden is bursting with flowers and buzzing with hummingbirds. Just go to watersgardencenter.com, click on Shop, and choose Personal Garden Shopper. A Waters Garden expert will pick the perfect plants for you, personally. The Personal Garden Shopper, only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. I have a shout out going out to the Prescott Valley Lions Club. You all were just a delight to be with. When did I go speak to them? Last Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Wednesday, went out to talk to them, um, breakfast club, and uh, had me just going over what we're doing at Water, some garden tips. And, and uh, one thing that I was sharing with them, now these are the business and community leaders that are there. I said, let me just tell you more than just gardening. Let me share what I give to our, our core, core, core customers. We call them the Ponderosa Circle. These are the folks that you know their names, you know their kids' names, you know their dogs, you, you see how they're doing. We love seeing them. They're your regulars. So we have this special party that we host just for our Ponderosa Circle uh, clients. They come in and I share what our vision is going to be. There's kind of like my board of directors. And so I said, let me share this with you. And I shared this presentation to the Lions Club. How, what, how are we so successful? How is a little tiny garden center going up against all the big boxes and marts and Amazon and everyone else? How do we do it? And we're very successful. We've had th three years in a row of triple, uh, double digit growth. We're doing really well. And here's how we do it. One of them is roses, one, one of many. So one thing, we just had 700 roses uh, delivered to the garden center and they're in full bloom. I mean, they're absolutely stunning. I mean, the entire front of the garden center smells of roses. It's awe-inspiring. It's just, like, it makes my heart go pitter-patter. Well, a big box, they can't give that kind of space. I mean, the entire front parking lot is nothing but roses. You're wading through rose plants and bloom and touch and smell, and you know, they can't do that. They have no interest in that. To have you know, 50 varieties of roses all in stock at the same time. I'm sure there's more than that. They don't want that. They want a Mr. Lincoln in, in bloom on an end cap. Just done. Okay, we're done. They want the, the most popular in bloom right now, and then they're done. You have no choice, really. Just just the most popular. Red tip Photinia. That's all we're going to have. Put it out there. We won't have the Cotoneasters and Silverberries and Eliagnus and Euonymus and all the other choices. Just one. And so that's what they're famous for, and they saturate the market with that. Well, we have the space and we have the expertise to know which varieties will do well and, and grow and really thrive. And the mountains of Arizona, actually all of Arizona, because we're so bright and because we're so dry, that's the perfect environment for growing roses. Roses in the Midwest, uh, this, it gets too cold. In the south, it's so humid, you, you just constantly fight black spot and mildew. In Southern California, they do well, but again, you get more issues with leaf spot and disease. Uh, here, we really don't. It's so easy. And 
all, virtually all the varieties, in fact, I think all but one variety is a repeat bloomer that we have in the garden center. Out of all the hundreds, only one will bloom once and done. That's the thornless variety of Lady Banks rose, or also called the tombstone rose. So you'll see a huge rose bush. It's well over 100 years old in the heart of tombstone. That's the plant. Think of that one's an evergreen, gets humongous, doesn't have any thorns. It's ever blooms once in the spring, it's done. But all the others will bloom repeatedly over and over, pulsating color throughout the gardens and throughout your, your gardens. And so a couple varieties to look at. You need to know what type of plant you want to, to grow. And he, here's a bra- basic breakdown. Here, here you go. Long stem roses, the ones you see at Valentine's Day or you want to give to your mom, those are called hybrid teas. It grows one long cane with a very large flower on the end. Those are long stem roses. That's a hybrid tea rose. One of my favorites in, out in the garden, actually, I think it shows a little bit better, are called Florabunda. It sends off one long rose uh, cane, but it has a cluster of flowers on the end. So it's not the, the, the flower isn't as large, but it has more of them. So the, the mass of color is actually larger. This is very, it looks really stunning in a landscape where you just need more of the foliage mass covered in just flowers. A Florabunda is one that works well with that. Then you've got uh, climbing roses. So you're going to climb up a trellis or climb up a post or climb up a, a barbed wire fence or, or wherever you want things to climb, a pergola. That's a climbing rose. It's a classic English you know, look, having cl- roses climb up. So we've got a, lo- a lot of those. They're huge. They get very large. And generally, they do need to be tied against something to get them to really show off. So here, you'd buy a climbing rose, plant it. You take the stake out, and then you'd fan those canes out and start training it to go up whatever that wall or, or cinder block or whatever you got. You train it to go up that. That's a climbing rose. Then we get into shrub. Shrub and really, uh, how do I describe? Shrub and carpet roses are kind of the same. So they're on their own rootstock. There's no, no fancy grafts coming in. So they're more robust. Typically, a shrub rose doesn't have a flower that's as large, and they've never been fragrant. So if you want the fragrance, you go with floribundas or hybrid teas. But now we're starting to introduce more shrub roses. The flowers are almost the size of a hybrid tea. They're becoming stunning, and we figured out how to add fragrance. So now you get the disease hardiness of a shrub rose. They don't get bugs. Uh, the deer are less likely to eat them. Uh, but now we get also the the fragrance and the size and the colors. So we're starting to introduce more and more of these shrub rose varieties. And again, they get up about four feet tall, four feet wide, some a little taller, some a little shorter. The carpet roses are exactly the same, only they only get up about knee high, and then they spread like this. It get kind of spread out to maybe six feet wide, but only knee high. It's called a carpet rose. Tremendous for front edge of raised beds or in between the rocks or by the driveway or you don't want it, you know, you don't want them growing above the, the, the height of your door as you swing out. So that's what you'd use a carpet rose for. And those are your basic, basic in a nutshell, there are some others. I mean, you get into David Austin roses, which are kind of old fa- fashioned European roses. They're kind of disease prone here in Arizona. So they're, they're a little more care. I might have a few out there, but not a lot of them. There's so many better choices for you. So we try to hone you in on that. And then you just go for color. What's your favorite color? Because Olympic, Mr. Lincoln, Chrysler Imperial, New Intrigue, they're, they're all reds. Now, which the, the shrub is the same, but the red flower changes a little bit. Then you go into lavenders and blues and yellows and whites and pinks and every other color, stripes. You can go into all sorts of colors. If you want to see this year's winners, this the 2019 Best of the Best Arizona Roses, I did set up a Pinterest board. If you're a Pinterest uh, uh, guru, you, you know what I'm talking about. You're going, oh, 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 this is great. I want to go see this. If you've never seen Pinterest, you're going, oh, technology. Oh. But Pinterest, go to type in Waters Garden Center. And I, typed, I created a whole new board. I think there's 29 roses that are the winners of each of these varieties. If you want to see this year's brightest and best roses, look at the t- 2019 
uh, rows winners, I think is what I, I created the board. You can see 18 and 17. Every year it's a, it's a different selection of roses, but it's kind of fun. I'll also post that on my blog so you can see that. And it'll, I'm sure it'll have a link out to Pinterest. So go to watersgardencenter.com, hit the blog button at the top. It'll be right there. So there's two ways to look at this year's 2019 rose winners. Or better yet, if you're within driving distance, it'd be worth an hour drive to come see us at Waters Garden Center. Just walk through and touch and feel them, smell them. That's what roses are really all about. The secret with roses, they love soil. When you plant them, dig a nice wide hole, not very deep. It's only the same depth as the root ball, but wide. Their roots go sideways. And then give them a rich soil. Don't just chuck them in that, you know, Paulden, Camp Verde, uh, heavy clay, silt soil. Uh, amend it with some composted mulch, and you'll find they'll take better. Then when you plant them, sprinkle just a handful of, of all-purpose plant food, a 744 food. The cottonseed meal on that food will make your roses bloom like you have never seen. And then water it in at the very end with root and grow. It's a rooting hormone. A root and grow is a it helps with transplant shock. Last thing you want to do is take a rose home that's in full color. You plant it, and it sheds all of its, its uh, flowers. You want to keep the flowers on. Well, the root and grow is what really makes that plant transition, stabilizes it, helps it with all the trauma of this new planting hole you put it in. That's some mulch, some food, and root and grow. Plant it and enjoy it for years of color to come. Got more in store for you. Be right back. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Gee, my flowers just bloom too much. Said no one, ever. Hi, this is Kenneth Waters. We had a crazy winter and everyone's ready for flowers in the garden. Waters Flower Power is made specifically for Arizona that gives flowers that extra boost to burst into bloom. It's an energy kick in the plants. Get ready for roses that rule, peppers that pop, and tomatoes that triumph. More power to the flowers with Flower Power at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. I remember as though it was yesterday. Should we be open Sundays or not? The revolution came after church social. After the fellowship, a friend was heading to the box store to get some plants because Waters wasn't open. Sunday was his only day to garden that week, just like it was yesterday. Waters Garden Center. It's open on Sunday from 9 to 5, with plant experts ready to advise on any subject. My name is Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road, here in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. I really should cover... A couple things. If we, I know we had some moisture this winter, but it's been a month and a half since we've seen any significant moisture. You really need to turn that irrigation system on. It, it's time to water your plants, especially if you've got a new landscape. Let's say it's, it's only been in the last 12, 18 months. Your plants are not fully rooted. You need They're more dependent on you than you think. And so that drip system is a, it just fills the gap. It makes the ground moist so it keeps it alive until the rains come here another month and a half. You know, July is usually when our monsoon rains come. We'll see significant moisture at that point. But but watch that. It's time. That, and if you're doing trees and shrubs, a couple tips. One, do not water very often. Some of you have just ridiculous this week. I just want to slap some customers. Um, you're watering like every day for 15 minutes. I mean, I just, ugh, ugh. Do some internet research. No one says to do that. No one. That's just not the way you water with drip irrigation. You want to water for a long time. This is a one gallon per hour emitter. That thing's got to be on for two hours just to give a to make the soil even remotely moist. And so you got to leave these drip systems, these uh, high efficiency micro irrigation systems. They got to, they have to run for hours, not minutes. You, it's all about quantity. You've got to get the quantity of water on there. Skip the time. Time means nothing with a drip system. Come on, folks. 
I know I keep preaching this, but no one's listening, it seems like. Come on, okay. Take a deep breath, Ken. Here we go. So listen to my words. Your drip system needs to run for a long time before any amount of water gets down to the root system. If you're watering every other day for 15 minutes, you might as well not even bother turning the system on because you're doing zero good. You need to water. You're, you're, you're just you're hydrating the first inch of soil, and that's it. We need to push that water down deeper. So turn that drip system on, water trees and shrubs about once a week, and leave that system on for at least minimum an hour. So I, I'm running mine two, three hours, depending on the size of the tree and how many meters. There's some calculation with that. If you got more on that, come talk to us. I've got a free water guide. I'll be glad, glad to give it to you. Just come in the nursery and say, hey, Ken said there was a water guide. Can I have one of those? And so we'll be glad to give it to you. It goes, explains all in depth, more than I have in just a minute here uh, on, this, on the show. So come, come talk to us. One, make sure you're watering. Two, go out there and really check for bugs. I'm telling you, you've got more insects. The aphids are taking over the roses. If you see that, come talk to us and get a bottle of multi-purpose insect spray. It will take that bug away. I mean, it's just going to wipe that, that shrub clean. You put it in a hose in sprayer. This year, I think of all years, you're going to need, it's time to upgrade the tools. Get a good hose in sprayer that makes it easy to apply bug killers. And then get a good bug killer. And don't if it's been on your shelf for a couple of years, throw it away. It's no good. It coagulates and gets condensed, and it's not usable. Claw. It's more work than it's worth. It needs to be fresh. Within the last eighteen twenty four months, you want to use a bug spray that's that's fairly new or just causes issues. Come and get a bottle of multi purpose insect spray and a good sprayer. We can help. We'll we'll adjust it for you. Just pour this in, attach your to your hose, and 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 spray. It's that easy. We'll, we'll set you up with that. Uh, but, but really, watch for the bugs. Thrip, spider mites, and aphids are. We are being overrun with those three bugs. It's been every other customer coming in with a sample. Uh, a sample thing, and I can almost spot it before you get out of your car going, oh, there's another thrip, thrip problem. Oh, there! look, that's spider mites. I can tell even before I look at it because I've seen so many samples. It's ridiculous how bad it is. Really check. Again, take your cell phone out, tap a branch on top of that glaze, that glass surface, and you'll see little specks. Whatever's on there, it'll fall off, and you'll see it roaming around. And then come talk to us, and we can help help you solve that problem. Until next week, thanks for tuning in. Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center, and we love talking gardening with friends. Roses are red and yellow and pink. Getting a vacuum for Mother's Day can really stink. Give Mom a gift that delights year after year, a beautiful blooming rose from Waters Garden Center. Waters is stocked with 700 specialty roses, hand-picked and expertly grown in honor of Mother's Day. The garden centers bursting with color and fragrance, including old favorites and never seen varieties mom's gonna love. Everything is coming up roses at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother to be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.